So when you're adjusting your Noga, you can adjust this nut and it'll move the arm a little bit. It's your fine adjust. Helps bring your needle in against what you're measuring. Okay. And so it moves this, this whole, uh, your entire mechanism here. There you go. And you can move your indicator. But you make this more or less stiff. But how in the world do they fit a tiny spring? How do they put a tiny spring into that little area? How do they fit a spring into that tiny little area? Well, it's a neat spring, and it's not what you think. Let's check it out. I think a bunch of us have these Noga indicator blocks, the magnetic bases. They're articulated arms, these move. You can attach them to your equipment all over the place and use your favorite indicator to, you know, check concentricity or check a dimension or tram something. But I thought we'd take a little closer look inside what makes these tick. Now, if I turn this to the side, the part that's interesting in this one is this uh, indicator starts to get a little, a little heavy when you compare it to this one but they're both the same indicator heads you know there if you look carefully on this arm there's a there's a an amount of spring tension there and on this one I can feel it you can't there's a little more spring tension there I find that helps with this slightly larger indicator to offset its weight, so gravity has a lot less to do with the measurement than it should. That looks like a regular washer, but in fact it's a Bellevue washer, and that is the secret magic that makes these things tick inside. Let's take a look. So we'll start with some hex keys and I like these multicolored sets and what we're going to need is this one and a half millimeter key. I'm going to go ahead and take my indicator out. It's a nice old Alina and it can go both ways. And what I like about this one is it's got the indicator there so you know how much preload you have in it. And it just has a beautiful feel to it. All right, so let's let's look at this thing and let's zoom in on it just a little bit while we're working on it. Okay, now this thread's on here. We're, we're gonna do it while it's all in place. This piece here is just to install a variety of different indicators. And of course, this one has a, a dovetail on it. I don't know if you can see that. It has that dovetail on it right there. And that slides right into this little crease right here, the corresponding piece. Yeah, there it is in cross section right there. And then this clamps on it and holds it shut. Now what makes this spring motion right here? If we take just take it apart find out. Nothing happens yet. Okay the back side has a a nut right here, but it's not really set up to to be able to hold on to it. And on the front side, once you take that screw out, there's this little red plug. 
So find one of your really small screwdrivers and if you pry that out, there it goes. And that gives us access into this hole right here. Let me shine a light down in it and maybe we can see it. And there it is, right there. Again, that's what's right behind that little red cap. So let's take it out. What could go wrong? Ah, oh, see I'm turning it. And this nut on the back side is just all turned up. Sort of spinning, not letting it out. So you just gotta put your finger on it to hold it. And small parts warning. Ah, there it is, look at that. And there's a whole bunch of Bellevue washers on that. And the bolt. Here's what it looks like inside. There's a little ball bearing there. There's some bumps here, a through hole. Where's the spring? Well, the spring is this stack up of Bellevue washers. And if you've not worked with them before, they're also called concave washers. And so they're sort of shaped like this. This is very exaggerated. But the through holes right here, and these are the sides. Let's see if we can get that into focus. So there's two of them together. And you can see it looks like a little bit of a flying saucer. And if we pull them apart, you can kind of see that this one's, you know, recessed down there on the inner side and sticking up on the outside. And so if I oppose them, they make those little flying saucers. And there's enough washers in here to make a series of these pancakes. You can sort of see it in the stack up. There it is. So that's 2468 Bellevue washers. There's that nut that likes to spin. It's easy to stop. And it goes right in here. All right, so that's where I put that stack of Bellevue washers in the nut. It's right there. I'm holding it so they don't spill out. And you just put it back together where it's supposed to go. And we're going to screw our screw into here. And we'll stop pull right in there and you can feel it get some tension now it's a feel thing you don't have a ton of adjustability but if you put your screwdriver just anything that can hold that nut still you can tighten this and I'm just doing a little quarter turn tights and then I'm checking the tension and that's about where I like it and then we'll put it together so again you just tighten with the one millimeter 1.5 millimeter uh, hex right in here on the bolt and then you hold this uh, nut on this side still and you can adjust how much gravity defying uh, strength your Noga head has. So it's a slight adjustment that's super helpful in putting your, making your Nogas work for you and giving you the performance you want.
I thought it was interesting. I thought I wanted to show it to you. And uh, just put your red cap back in. Put your screw on. And your screw can, you know. make an adjustment on that tension. You can push this, this fine adjust right here where you want it and it holds it firm. All right, there you go. Hope that helps. Hope your measurements improve. Thanks for watching.